Hello, everybody. Hello, Deja, and it's Kiki, Monique, hello, Sharon, hello. Mama Carleen, good evening. Tamara, good evening. Mozella, good evening. Lissa, what's happening? So Stovall, hello. Miss Linda Anderson. Evening. Good evening, Miss Mary Snow. Good evening, Missy, Miss Brownie, Kimberly. Mother Betty Harris, what's happening? Hope everybody had a good day. Hope everybody is having an awesome, awesome day. Ba -da -da, da -da -da. <laughs> Trying to give everybody this, give give everybody a chance to come in. Um, 658. We're going to give them two minutes to come in. First lady, what's going on? <laughs> Tiffany, how you doing? What's up, Joy, Maria, Jason, Prestiana? Ms. Hickman, Trey, what's going on? Happy birthday. Kinfolk, what's going on? Ms. Angie, how you doing? Love you too. Randall, what's going on? We got one minute, one minute. What's going on, cousin? What's going on? Charles D. Munn. All right, seven o'clock. You you made it, you made it, Nikki. You made it. Hey, seven o'clock. 
Thank everybody for tuning in. Hope everybody had a, a terrific Thursday and we hope and pray that uh, things are going well for you. Um, we are so glad to have everybody on and uh, those that are coming in, if I haven't called your name or spoken to you, I greet you today in the name of the in the name of Jesus Christ and the name that's above every name. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to this living word from the living room. That's what we call it. And uh, so happy to see everybody on. And uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in this word and uh, we're going to pray and we're going to deal with this, this topic tonight. Father, we thank you for, again, another day. Thank you again for your blessings that you've given. Thank you again, Lord, for just uh, your hand of protection and Thank you for how you kept us throughout this day. Thank you for, for being our provider that God, even in the midst of all that's going on, God, you still so good to us and we're thankful. Forgive us for our shortcomings, Lord, because we all have sinned and come short of your glory. God, we ask for your divine forgiveness. And God, we pray tonight that this word that we're going to study and look at, God, that you will, give, you will give us insight and we ask for your Holy Spirit for revelation. And God, we, as we always pray, till the soil of our hearts, Lord, that this word may fall on good soil and bring forth the harvest. And God, we pray that we not only be doers, hearers of your word, but God, that we be doers as well. God, I pray for every person on this feed, God, that you bless them right where they are and what they stand in need of. And God, through this live stream on tonight, God, I pray that somebody get help, saved, and even delivered. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We thank you. Amen. All right. Carmeletta, you here. Glad to see you here. Again, hey, everybody, Miss Ella, uh, Cousin Jerry, Miss Janice, Octavia. Good evening, everybody. So glad to see y'all on. All right. If you remember on last week, not last week, we was in revival last week, I'm sorry. But um, the week before when we started this, we started a series on dealing daily with the devil. <clears throat> and what we learned about on, on last time, last week we had, we dealt with um, that we concluded that the power, the presence and the personality known as Satan exists in this world and we agreed that um, in order for us to battle against him, we must recognize his personality. And in recognizing his personality, we talked about four areas that Satan has a provocative personality. He loves to provoke and push people out of control, making them lose it. We learned that he has a proud personality. He will make you be, he will make you seem uh, puffed up and make you think you're better than, than anybody else. He has a possessive personality in, in, in which he wishes to put people under his authority and his power. But above all, we realize he has a predictable personality. And if Satan tempts people today, they can rest assured that he will return to tempt them on tomorrow. So, so in other words, he don't go on with leave of absence. He, he, work, he does his job on a daily basis. All right, so tonight we're gonna continue to deal with this, dealing daily with the devil, but we're gonna deal with, uh, let me get to it. We're gonna, de dealing daily with the devil, but we're gonna deal with resisting his power. Amen, amen. Uh, So oh, let, let's let's start looking at this, and and the, and the question is, and starting out tonight is, is there available to us methods to assist us in dealing daily with the devil? Is there any method that we can use on dealing daily with the devil? Well, according to the scripture, uh, James chapter four verse seven, it says, "Submit yourselves therefore to God." resist the devil and he will flee from you. Well, to resist, 
means to stand against. It means to brace yourself and not be moved, to put forth a conscious effort. Come on, somebody say conscious effort to prevent, halt, or hinder the evil efforts designed of, of another against us. It also resisting means is opposing being someone's puppet. Amen, that's gonna make sense later on. Resisting suggests, here's the biggest thing, that we do something, okay? All right, we, we often, let me, let, me, let me go here. We often allow ourselves to be carried by the currents. Wherever, wherever the river flow, that's where we go, okay? Um, we, we have, it, it sometimes it seems if um, we have no mind of our own, wherever the crowd say, whatever the crowd say is right or wrong, we go along with it. Um, we know that it's wrong and we know that it's not right. And we know that what's being said will hurt or damage the character of an innocent person, but we offer no resistance to the lie or the gossip. I'm talking to somebody here. Yeah, and then too, we often, we, we wish for God to do everything for us. However, God only intervenes in our lives, get this, when we have exhausted all available resources uh, to do for ourselves. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? Let me, let me come back on the big screen. What does that mean? That mean, get this, God will not rescue from the river if you can swim, preach Marcus man. Somebody need to get that. Somebody need to get that. God, we, we want God to do everything. We, we want God to, to save us and do everything. But listen, God will not rescue from the river if you can swim. Resisting means that we have to do something. Are y'all on here tonight? Y'all give me some hearts or something. Let me know y'all are live or something on here. That resisting means that we must do something. So in order to deal with the devil on tonight, let me get back to it. We must resist. Okay. Are y'all on home with me? Amen. Amen. Okay. We must do something. All right. Let's move. Let's move on. All right. So there are three practical means of resisting the devil. Three things that, that, that will help us resist the devil. The first one is refusing situations and places of temptation. That's the first one, okay? All right, Satan, watch this. Satan can tempt, uh, tempt us to sin as individuals. Y'all got it? Then he can use us also as catalysts or means whereby we can stir someone else to sin. Oh Lord, Paul says, to the church in Rome, look at it, Romans 14, 21 through 22. It's good neither to eat flesh nor drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the things which he alloweth. What is that saying? Okay, we must, ref we must refuse to enter into places and situations where temptation will lead us to sin. Y'all got to get this. Or promote us to, to call someone else to sin. We know our strengths and we know our weaknesses. Amen. We know how much we can, we can and we know how much we cannot take before we, before we yield. And if we know this then, here's the question. Why then do we put ourselves in situations where we'll be overwhelmed by temptation? Y'all come on, talk to me. What are you saying? A recovering alcoholic would be foolish if he continues to put himself in situations and places where liquor, <clears throat> excuse me, where liquor 
and alcoholic beverages flow freely. He would be crazy if he put, if he's a recovering alcoholic, he would be crazy if he allowed himself to be in a place where, where liquor and, 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 and beer and so on down the line uh, would flow freely. Okay, a drug addict, a, a recovering drug addict is foolish if he continues to associate himself with people who do drugs. We resist by refusing to even be in the number where temptation is strong. We can stay away. Come on, somebody said we can do it. We can stay away. We don't have to have those buddies or hang around those folk, Lord help us here, that will help destroy our souls and send us to hell. We don't have to, we don't have to hang around those people. We, we, I, I shared this before. You are the CEO of your circle. You have, you have the authority to promote, demote, or terminate. Priest Marcus, you are the CEO. And if these folks, are, if, if these people are not helping you to get to where you're trying to go, why are they in your circle? So, so you, 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 have to, you have to be mindful of your surroundings. Don't allow yourself to be sucked, sucked into places where it's, it will cause you to sin or tempt you to sin. Okay, let me prove a point. Jesus refused to enter situations or places that will move him or others to sin. In John chapter four, the Pharisees attempted to stir up trouble between the disciples of Jesus and the disciples of John. Y'all remember that. Listen, if you will, what, what the writer says. It, it's, it's on the screen. It says, the Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. When the Lord learned of this, look what it says. He left Judea and went back and went back more excuse me, and went back once more to Galilee. Jesus even refused to enter a situation where the temptation to divide and destroy the relationship between his disciples and John's disciples were present. Would not the world be a better place if we refuse to speak or act when temptation is there to say something or do something that will hurt or harm the condition of others. However, we do not resist and stand strong against temptation and we become the puppets, that, that, that word again, that Satan used that will that was, that was pour out venom and poison. Resistance is simply our refusal, here it is, to be sucked into a, a situation or drawn to a place of temptation. I'm teaching this tonight, y'all. Y'all hope y'all getting this. The sad part about this is, is even with our knowing the end result, we even with us knowing what's going to happen at the end, we voluntarily put ourselves to the test. We do it all the time. But we want to pass the book on everybody else. But we voluntarily put ourselves to the test. We hear lies about somebody that's about a person, uh, uh, that, that, that we, we let, let me back up, okay? We, we, we can hear something about somebody. We can hear that, uh, let, let's, let's, let's just say Mary. Uh, we, we, when we hear lies that Mary told on us, somebody, somebody lied on us, what's the first thing we do? We allow ourselves to get mad. We allow ourselves to get angry. We know at that moment, watch this now, we should not act, we, we would not act civil if we met up with Mary. We, we already know that if Mary lied on us, the, the, the moment we see Mary, we getting ready to get out of character. Therefore, watch this, we should refuse any contact at that time with Mary. Y'all don't, y'all go looking for Mary. Uh, but but we should refuse any contact with Mary. But but we we go we said we put a search part out for Mary. We call everybody da da da. Y'all seen Mary? I got I, me and Mary got to get this straight. But we put ourselves right in the middle 
of temptation. Y'all ain't talking to me. James said that we must resist the devil. And if we resist, then we must resist to enter into temptation. The only thing that I'm saying tonight is there is so much that we can do. Please get this. There is so much that we can do to keep ourselves from being tempted. Amen, somebody. When we refuse to get when we refuse to get into temptation, we don't have to worry about yielding to it. The, the uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, Jesus even taught us, lead us not what into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And in Jesus, here it is, here, here, here it is. Let, let's, let's just go and put it on here on the table. In Jesus, we got to put on the whole armor of God so that we can stand against the wiles of the devil, devil and refuse the temptation that's coming towards us. When we are in Jesus, we draw nigh unto God. Y'all get this. We, when we're in Jesus, we, we, we draw nigh unto God. In Jesus, we, we gird our loins with the truth. Let's put, let's put our arm on. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. We cover our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We take on the shield of faith. We put on the helmet of salvation. We have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And in him, we refuse to enter into temptation. In Jesus and only Jesus, are we able to resist and make Satan stand still. Amen, somebody. I hope y'all getting this. Are y'all in here with me? Are y'all in here, here with me? So the first thing in resisting the devil, we must refuse situation and places of temptation. If you know it's going to cause you, it's, if it's going to cause you to be tempted, why even go there? Why even bother? It's some things we got to do ourselves. Amen. Amen. Y'all with me? All right. <clears throat> the second thing is removing ourselves from the temptation. The, okay? This is when we unconsciously find ourselves in a situation or place that's tempting. We are in the mess before we realize that we are in there. We didn't have time to co contemplate and refuse to get into it, but we just happen to find ourselves there. We, we all can testify, we've been there. You, you just happen to find yourself in the middle of it. Well, if you are to resist these situations and places, when you realize that you are there, watch it, you need to remove yourself from the place and the situation. Did y'all catch what I just said? When you realize you are there, then you must remove yourself from the place and the situation. When a recovering alcoholic goes to the party, not knowing that liquor is there and the temptation is too strong, he or she needs to remove themselves and leave. That's how you that's how you resist the devil. Are y'all are y'all getting this? Are y'all with me? On another occasion, Jesus found himself in the midst of a tempting situation. Okay? He had just fed 5,000 men besides women and children with five barley loaves and two small fish. Y'all remember? And the crowd wanted to make him king by force. They were going to vote him in as the king right there on the spot. And I don't know about y'all, but that's a tempting situation. But listen, if you will, how Jesus handled it. It's on the screen. He, after the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus knowing, y'all get that, that they intended to come and make him king by force, look what he did. He withdrew, he removed himself again into the mountain by himself. Look, 
you don't have to remain in a fight that you know you can't win. That's that's a word from somebody right there. You cannot, you don't remain in a fight that you know you cannot win. You remove yourself from it. All right. And 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 okay, let's let's you let's go to the military. In military uh terminology, that means to retreat. That's retreating. Many an army have removed have removed or gracefully retreated from a battle, but went, went on to win the war. We don't have the power in ourselves to win against Satan and his temptation. Therefore, there are times when we must take ourselves out of the battle. Here's a word for somebody. Here's a word for somebody. You cannot show up to every battle you've been invited to. That's a word for somebody. So, sometimes you need to remove yourself out of the situation. In the Psalms, David celebrates the fact that God can and will remove us out of temptation. Are y'all with me? Once we are in the mess, watch this, he removes us. Listen as, as he prays God and saying, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou has lifted me up or removed me and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. David was simply saying, excuse me, that God took him out of the battle and allowed him to retreat gracefully. Y'all missing me. When you are in Jesus, he does it two ways. He will, he will take you out of the storm or take the storm out of you. Please, Marcus, man, let me say that again. G, he, when, when you are in Jesus, he does it two ways. He will either take you out of the storm or take the storm out of you. Jesus can break the bonds that would keep us you in temptation because the scripture says, watch this, whom if the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free, what? Indeed. I need a glass of water on that, a sip of water. So we must remove ourselves from the temptation. It does not mean you're weak. It does not mean uh, 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 anything like that. But what it really means is that you are mature enough to recognize if I go here, if I go there, that is too much for me. <clears throat> I need to remove myself. And not only that, watch this. You need some people in your circle that will hold you accountable. Hello, somebody. I, I told y'all what a real friend is. A real friend is someone that would check you and cover you at the same time. If you are, if you ha have a particular, you know your weaknesses, you know your strengths. So if your weakness uh, will cause you to slip and your friend knows that weakness, your friend ought to be able to tell you, look, you don't need to go in there. You don't need to go over there. Leave it alone. Let's, let's do something else. You have to remove yourself from the temptation. Just like Jesus did to, in, in, this, in this text tonight. He withdrew himself and went to the mountain. He, he removed, in other words, he removed himself. That, we, we could do, listen, y'all, we can do a better job of removing ourselves from situations. Listen, I'm going to go here tonight, and I may lose some people, but I'm going to go here tonight. Some of the most gossiping folks are folk in church. If it's something that somebody don't doesn't like, they look for co-signers because they don't want to be out on that limb by themselves. Priest Marcus, I will. People are looking for co -signer. If you know it's gossip, if you know it can divide the church, why would you remain there and be a part of the drama? Remove yourself. If it's going to cause you to sin, if you, God gives us spiritual eyes. If, if it's going to cause you to slip, if it's going to cause you to sin, remove yourself from the temptation. People don't talk to me. When people come to me about gossip or whatever, I don't entertain it. 
I will not entertain it. And if you bring me something about somebody, we're going to get to somebody so you can tell me again about what the somebody said. That'll, that'll teach you how to not gossip. Y'all don't hear me. But it, but, but if it's causing you, if, if you see the potential risk of it causing you to, to fall into to, to sin and you in temptation, remove yourself. Come on, somebody just talk to yourself, type it on, on there. Remove yourself, remove yourself, remove yourself, remove yourself. Somebody got to get this. Remove yourself. Okay, so. Dealing daily with the devil, resisting his power. Resist means uh, that we do something. Okay, just, just, just re reviewing. First thing, refuse situations and the places of temptation. We got to do that. Second thing, remove ourselves from the temptation. All right. Number three, remain in prayerful for righteousness. When in our own strength, and power that we cannot refuse or remove ourselves from temptation, we must remain prayerful that even in the midst of temptation, God will keep us righteous. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. When in our own strength and power that we cannot refuse or remove, ourselves from temptation, we must remain prayerful that even in the midst of the temptation, God would keep us righteous. That's a word for somebody. David said in Psalms 23 and 3, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. When Satan overwhelms us, and we can't seem to be able to hold out. We must remember Psalms 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted in his way. Come on, somebody. Each time we bow before the almighty God, our prayer needs to be, lead me not into, not into temptation but deliver me from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. We must remain prayerful. Listen, you ought to be able to get a prayer through. Come on, somebody. You ought to be able to get a prayer through because prayer changes things. It's not how, 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 <clears throat> how much you say, but it's in what you say. In other words, if, if I can see, if, 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 if I'm using my spiritual eyesight, eyesight and I can see the temptation uh, before me, my prayer, Lord, don't let me go there. Don't let me go there. Lord, hold, hold my mind, hold my heart that I, I, I don't fall into this temptation. I got to, as I'm removing myself, prayer, you got to stay, you got to remain prayerful for righteousness sake. Look what they, again, David said, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me. In other words, he's in front. I'm following behind him. Then David, David come back again. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Listen, when the Lord order your steps. That's good, y'all. When the Lord order your step, he can, re, he will remove you from, from places and situations of temptation. Somebody type, somebody type that tonight. When the Lord order your steps, Lord have mercy. He will lead you to places where you won't be tempted. So to deal daily with the, de the devil, James says we must draw nigh to God. and resist the devil and he will flee from us. And to resist him, we must refuse places and situations of temptation. 
We must remove ourselves from places and situations where temptations are strong. And not only that, we must remain prayerful for righteousness sake. Did y'all get all of that? Got one other thing I need to share with y'all. Yeah, Lord, when the Lord order your steps. Now, here, here's the last thing. And I didn't put it on the screen. But we have to submit to God. To submit to God, get this, is to recognize your weakness. Oh, I should have put this on the screen. To stop fighting and to surrender to him, at, to, 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 to surrender to him as your ultimate and final authority. Satan is stronger than you. He's smarter than you, and he has been practicing his craft long uh, for, for years. There's only one way to resist him. The same way the king of kings resisted him. How did he do it? He used the word. I got to get in my word. When the devil whispered his lies to your conscience, you got to proclaim the truth of God's word. I'm done. You got to submit yourself to him. You got to give it all over to him. Say, listen, uh, Ken folks, if you still on his, Ken folks, if, if you still on here, just, just, just witness with me. You, you play basketball. Those of you that play basketball, you coach basketball. When, when, whenever you, you go on a scout a team, you, you take your pad, your pencil, you go and you, let, let me get on the big screen with this. Let, okay, when, when you go on a scout or team, you, you, you get your notebook and your pen, your pencil, and you go and you watch the other team, the team that you're scouting. You write down their strengths, you write down their weaknesses, you, you write down their plays, you write down their defenses. You, you do a thorough examination of that team because you, you want to use every possible angle that will help you win. Watch it. Satan is the same way. He watches us. He scouts us on a daily basis. He knows what we like. He knows what, what tick, triggers our, our brain. He knows what can uh, 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 desires of our hearts. He, he scouts us on a daily basis. He knows where our strengths are. He knows what our weaknesses are. Satan is so smart that you can smell something and it'll trigger something in your brain. Satan is so smart that you can hear something and it'll trigger something in your heart. He scouts us on a daily basis. So he knows our weaknesses. But listen, if, if, if I submit myself to God and I allow God to fight for me instead of me trying to fight for myself, because again, Satan is stronger, he's smarter, he's wiser. He's been, he been at this stuff a long time. He knows, he's, he, I, I hate to give that joke credit, but he's smart. He's smart. But if I submit to God, and I listen to God through the authority of his word. If I get this word in me, whenever Satan tries to manipulate or tempt me, I have something that I can fight with. His word is powerful. When Jesus, you remember we studied the last time, when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, Jesus fought him with the word. That's the way we're going to win. If I'm going to resist the devil, I got to fight him with the word. That's all I got tonight. That's all I got. We got to fight him with the word. Amen. Amen. I hope, I hope and pray y'all got something out of this tonight. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really being blessed by this because um, even uh, in a pandemic, y'all, Satan don't, he ain't taking no break. 
if you if you pay attention, he slowly what he's trying to do is divide us. Watch this. You got church folk fighting over whether we ought to be in the building or not. That is crazy to me. That is crazy. I, I've had pastors to come to me and say, well, when you going back into the church uh, and into the building, I said, I don't know. It, it won't be any time soon. Oh, they come with all of this. And I'm like, listen, you do what's best for your congregation. I'm going to do what, what I feel is best for the flock that God has given me. I'm not about to argue over that, but see, that's a, that's a tactic Satan will use to try to divide the body of Christ. That's what he does. So I remove my situation. Y'all know me. I shut down so quick and I, and, 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 and I let y'all have it. I, I, I'm doing, I'm doing better with my, with, with, with my speech because sometimes I can slick tear you off in Jesus name and, and go on by my business. But some, but I share it with you, you cannot show up to every battle you've been invited to. When folk come, remove yourself, resist it. You gotta do something yourself. I told you tonight, God is not gonna save you when you know how to swim. He's not gonna do that. It's some things we can do ourselves. And I want to encourage us tonight, let us do a better job of resisting the devil. Miss Clotil Carter, some of y'all on here that went to South League, Miss Clotil Carter, she was always in, in class, she taught us history. She said, an out of mind is the devil workshop. And if that ain't true, I don't know what it is. It just seemed like when you by yourself, that's when Satan loves to just manipulate and try to get you to do stuff, say stuff that you shouldn't say. Listen, I'm not going to sit in front of this computer and tell y'all that I'm perfect. The devil is a lie. I'm not perfect. I, 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 let, me, let me put it like this. I'm saved, but I got sinner problems. And I'm, I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress. And I think that's the biggest thing as, as Christians that we need to be, we need to be honest and say, hey, I'm struggling. If if y'all on here tonight and you ain't ashamed, I dare you to type that, type that. Say, I'm I'm struggling with some things. Come on, just be honest. I'm struggling with some things. But with God's help, we'll be able to overcome those struggles. Amen. Amen. I'm I'm still I'm saved, but I'm struggling. I love God, but I'm struggling. Let me let me ask y'all this. And, and, and my time is almost up. Has there ever been a point in your, on your journey where you felt like uh, you just couldn't, you just seemed like you couldn't do right? It just seemed like you back to back to back, you just falling short, you coming short. Okay, y'all ain't gonna be honest. I've been there. I've been there. But I learned that a lot of the things that I was falling for was because I didn't remove myself nor resist. Okay, how saved you are. You still know how to drink. You still know how to smoke dope. You still know how to fornicate. You still know how to uh, backbite. You still know how to lie, gossip. You still know how to do all of this. You, 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 you didn't become a... Uh, 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 all, all that stuff didn't just vanish. You still know how to do it. Whatever your it was, you still know how to do it. But listen, God has given us power. All we have to do is submit to him. Draw nigh unto him and let God help us. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much for coming on. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for this Bible study. Thank you again, Lord, for showing us tonight of ways that we can resist the enemy. Lord, I pray tonight that we all draw nigh unto you because God, we cannot fight him on our own. And God, we admit that, but God, we know with your help, help, we're able to overcome. God, help us to be mindful that there are so many situations we don't have to fall, in, uh, fall into, but God, that we can remove ourselves, we can resist, and even in those times when we feel like we can't remove or resist, God help us to be mindful that we must remain prayerful. Prayer still works. Thank you for the gift of prayer. And God, I pray for all my family and friends on this feed tonight. 
Bless them in their journey, whatever their struggles may be, God. Give them strength to overcome. God, we know that one day we're gonna, we won't have to deal with all of this. But God, until then, help us to endure. And God, if we fall short, God, help us to be mindful that we can pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, get back on the journey. God, thank you again for, for what you did at Calvary. And it's because what you did at Calvary that we're able to understand, God, that even though we fall down, God, you still love us. And God, pray that you would just continue to bless all of those who are sick in the hospital, behind prison wall, everybody everywhere. Bless them as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, y'all. Thank y'all so much. I love y'all with the love of God. Thank y'all so much for always tuning in on Thursday uh, for Bible study. And nothing happens. We shall see you all Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And I'm excited about what we're going to talk about. Uh, so hopefully you got something out of this message tonight. Resist the devil. Don't y'all give in. Don't y'all give in. Don't don't y'all let Satan convince y'all. Y'all stand firm in the word. Love y'all. See y'all the next time. God bless.